Hello, students of statistics. Professor Pyra here to give you a lesson in top laner performance. There are many ways we can evaluate how a player is doing, and some are better than others. One metric we often look at is damage per minute, also known as DPM. If someone is dealing a ton of damage, that's probably a good thing, but there are different factors that affect it. In the top lane, there's a huge difference between the highest and lowest damage dealing champions. So say you play a bunch of Gangplank, one of the top laners with the highest DPM. Sometimes the champion you pick and the frequency you play it can skew your numbers upward a whole lot. It doesn't necessarily show how well you're playing. Damage per minute is highly win biased. Look at Shen. The difference between his DPM and wins in losses is huge. But all is not lost. We can still use it to create a damage rating. Let's look at my champion pool in the last five games. We look at my win-loss record and the professional average DPM in wins and losses for those champions. We take the sum of the professional average, multiply it by the frequency played, and divide it by my total number of games played to get the expected damage output. Finally, we divide my average DPM by the expected DPM, apply some math, and voila! We get a damage rating! Now that we've tackled damage, let's talk about the effects the jungler can have on the top lane. Maybe your jungler is ganking your lane a bunch, but the enemies isn't exhibiting the same pressure. Does that make you a good top laner, or just good friends with your jungler? One way we can work this out is to look at the jungle proximity difference. This is the amount of time your jungler spends within 2,000 range of you, from 3 to 15 minutes of game time. Essentially, it's a measure of how much he's your buddy. We can also look at how much time the opponent jungler spends with the enemy top laner. So if we look at someone's jungle proximity minus the opponent's jungle proximity, we get the jungle proximity difference. The higher the difference, the better off you are in terms of jungle pressure. We use this as part of our overall weighting to take into account the effect of the jungler in the top laner's performance. But let's talk about a lighter subject. Death. Now we all know dying is bad, but dying when you're caught out alone is even worse. It indicates bad positioning, poor vision, just general bad news all around. So we need to differentiate between a death and an isolated death. Isolated death means dying without any of your teammates around you. 1500 range, to be exact. And then we have a whole load of other statistical metrics. Kills, assists, deaths, isolated deaths, CSD at 10, CSD at 15, CS per minute, damage rating, jungler proximity difference, kills plus assists at 15, kill participation. I could go on. But not all of these things are as important as the others in determining how well a top laner is doing. But that's a lot of numbers. So we asked some smart people, you might recognize them, about how we should bring it all together. We broke it down like this, and here are the results. As Heimerdinger says, we've applied the formula for success. We'll see you next time on the EULCS. Good luck, and have fun!